Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Rajya Sabha TV, your one stop for the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. Breach of privilege notice against Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi in Rajya Sabha, Congress MP KVP Ramachandra Rao alleges that the Union Minister instigated BJP members to disrupt proceedings last Friday. Four militants killed, another captured in an encounter in Nogam sector near the LOC in Kupwara. Security officials say the dead men were foreign nationals. Curfew restrictions are lifted from all parts of Kashmir except Anantnag. For the first time after 17 days of unrest, mobile internet train services, however, still remain suspended. Four-day U.S. Democratic National Convention starts in Philadelphia. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton gets powerful endorsements from Bernie Sanders and Michelle Obama. And in a bizarre knife attack in Japan, nine people are stabbed to death and over 25 injured at a home for people with disabilities. All the victims are patients. Starting with Parliament proceedings in Congress, MP KVP Ramachandra Rao on Tuesday moved a breach of privilege notion against Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi in Rajya Sabha. He alleged that the Union Minister instigated BJP members to disrupt proceedings of the House to scuttle his private member's bill on granting special status to Andhra Pradesh. Raising the issue during Zero Hour, Congress MP KVP Ramachandra Rao said that a notice under Rules 187 and 188 was given against Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi. Rao alleged that Nakvi allowed the BJP members to troop into the well of Rajya Sabha on Friday to stall proceedings. I have given a notice of breach of privilege under Rule 187 and 188 of Rules of Procedure and okay, okay. of Venus. No, no, when did you give notice? Sir, my, my, my prayer, sir, the, my prayer, sir, the, the action of Sri Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi, no, no, no. is parliamentary affairs, okay. by permitting no, no, listen, listen. to go to the house, to go to the... Okay, bank. now you listen to me, it is and with me. Committed a yes, of, yeah, no. of the house. Now listen to me. Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurian said that Rao's notice has been received and it will be examined by Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari. Your notice is with me. Sir. It will be examined by the Honorable Chairman. Sir. And, and the result will be intimated. KVP Ramachandra Rao was anchoring a private member's bill for implementation of a special package for Andhra Pradesh. The bill, however, got stalled due to protest by the Treasury benches over the controversial filming of Parliament by a Lok Sabha legislator. The House was then adjourned for the day and the bill could not be taken up. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the opposition, led by the JMM and the Congress, accused the ruling BJP of intimidation and threats in the recent biennial polls to Rajya Sabha. Opposition members also sought a House committee to investigate the alleged misuse of administrative machinery in Jharkhand during those polls. The government, however, refuted the allegations of misuse of office and assured a fair probe. Raising the issue during zero hour, Sanjeev Kumar of the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha alleged that on the eve of polling, two opposition MLAs were harassed in some old cases, while one JMM MLA was arrested in a petty case to prevent him from casting his vote. Maintaining that a copy of the CD proving coercion by a police officer would be made available to the Union Home Minister, the JMM member demanded strict action against the police officer. My son, जब विधायकों को धन बल एवं अन्य संवैधानिक ताकतों से अपने समर्थन में वोट डालने पर तैयार नहीं काज किया जा सका तब दो विधायकों को पुराना केसों के नाम पर इतना परेशान किया गया कि वे वोट नहीं डाल सके और सत्ता पक्ष सिर्फ एक वोट से कम में चुनाव जीत गया Leader of opposition Gulam Nabi Azad corroborated Kumar's stance and alleged that the ruling party had resorted to decadent measures to win Rajya Sabha seats. He also demanded formation of a House committee to probe the incident. The JDU and the CPIM later also joined ranks with the Congress. The demand is that the government senior IAS officers to election for the election, to kill the MLAs, to kill the MLAs, and to kill the candidates. This is absolutely undemocratic, unacceptable. Now, Sri, 
मैं सरकार से विनती करूंगा कि इन चुनावों में okay. कोई किसी तरह की भी धांधली जो होती है वो इस देश के लिए बहुत गंभीर yeah. और सदन के लिए बहुत गंभीर होगा इसलिए okay. मैं आपसे कहता हूं कि ये जो right. है, इसको बहुत That should be investigated properly, and the guilty should guilt should be established and punished. Rubbishing accusations of irregularities, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi upheld the credibility of the Election Commission. चुनाव आयोग की विश्वसनीयता और चालू चुनाव आयोग के कामकाज पर हम सबको विश्वास है, हम सबको किसी भी तरह से चुनाव आयोग के कामकाज और विश्वसनीयता पर शक करने का कोई कारण नहीं है। The government further asserted that action will be initiated as per procedure. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Lok Sabha meanwhile cleared the child labour amendment bill on Tuesday. As per the new bill, employment of children below 14 years is a cognizable offence for employers and provides for penalty for parents as well. It also lays down that children between 14 to 18 years should not be employed in any hazardous occupations or processes. It also provides for increased punishment for violators. The penalty has now been increased to imprisonment between six months and two years or a fine of 20,000 to 50,000 rupees or both. The bill was passed by the Rajya Sabha on the 19th of July. Meanwhile, in other news, huge setback for India in the Antruksh Devas case. An international tribunal in The Hague has ruled against the Indian government over the cancellation of a contract between telecommunications firm Devas Multimedia and Antriksh Corporation Limited. Now, the decision is likely to cost India billions of dollars in damages. The case pertains to 2005 when ISRO's commercial arm, Antrix Corporation, entered an agreement with Devas to lease out satellite spectrum that the Bangalore-based company could use to provide high-quality telephony and internet services. According to the deal, Antrix would launch two ISRO satellites and lease nearly 70 megahertz of S-band satellite spectrum to Devas for 12 years. In return, they was committed to paying an upfront fee of over $30 million. But in 2011, Israel annulled the agreement after an audit report showed irregularities in the agreement. The Permanent Court of Arbitration has now ruled that the government's actions in annulling the Israel Davis contract had breached the treaty commitments to accord fair treatment to Davis's foreign investors. In more national news, curfew was lifted today from all parts of Kashmir except Anantnag town after 17 days of unrest in the valley. However, restrictions on assembly of four or more people will continue in some parts of the valley. Curfew was imposed across Kashmir on the 9th of July, a day after the killing of Hezbollah Mujahideen commander Burhan Wani. Mobile telephone, internet services and train services remain suspended. Schools, colleges and other educational institutions also remain closed due to a strike called by separatist groups. The separatists have also called for a march to Kulgam on Wednesday and a three-day shutdown from tomorrow to the 29th of July. As many as 47 people were killed and 5,500 others injured in these clashes. वहाँ के युवा भी समझ रहे हैं, नौजवान इस बात को अब समझने लगे हैं कि पाकिस्तान के द्वारा ये भड़काने का जो प्रयास था पत्थर फेंकने का पुलिस दलों पर सुरक्षा दलों पर इस बात को लेकर एक बड़ी बातें प्रेस मीडिया के माध्यम से जनता ने समझी है तभी तो वहाँ पे कर्फ्यू में जेल देने की हमने सोची है हम चाहते हैं कि लोगों को इनकन्वीनियंस कम हो जाए अब 10-15 दिन हो गए लोग काफी गरीब लोग भी इसमें रहते हैं और वो भी अगर थोड़ा बहुत जाते हैं अपनी मजदूरी वगैरह करने दूसरा ये है एसेंशियल कमोडिटीज के लिए भी जो दूध सब्जी है फल है वगैरह राशन वगैरह है बाकी चीजें हैं इसी को दवाई लेनी है मेडिकल शॉप्स तो खुली है हमने अपील की थी पहले कई जगह तो कोशिश हमारी ये है कि लोगों की इनकन्वीनियंस कम हो जाए and staying with Kashmir, four militants were killed in another apprehended by security forces during an encounter in Nogam sector near the line of control in Kupwara district. According to army officials, all the militants were foreign nationals. Union Minister of State for Home, Kiran Rijiju, called the arrest of a terrorist a big success, saying that it brings out in the open the game plan of Pakistan. Security forces expect some vital information from the militant that was caught alive. Zinda Atangwadi ko पकड़ना ये बहुत बड़ी कामयाबी है इससे बहुत और राज खोलेगा और उनका नेटवर्क सारा उसका पोल जो है और दुनिया के सामने में खोलेगा वन ग्रुप विच इज पॉसिबली इन्फिल्ट्रेटेड थ्री फोर डेज बैक इज फोर फोर टेररिस्ट हैव बीन न्यूट्रलाइज्ड टुडे देयर इज अ लिटिल इंटरनल डिस्टरबेंस देयर विल बी अटेम्प्ट्स व्हिच आर गोइंग टू बी मेड टू टू पुश इन मोर एंड मोर इन्फिल्ट्रेशन 
and uh, we are we are quite well prepared to to deal with it but yes we will see and that's my estimate that we will see more infiltration attempts in the coming uh, coming few weeks the central government on tuesday assured all help to flood ravaged assam in dealing with the crisis nearly 13 lakh people are reeling under the fury of flood in 18 districts of the state flood situation has also aggravated further in arunachal pradesh bihar and west bengal The centre will send a team to assess the current flood situation in Assam. The Brahmaputra River is flowing above danger mark in the state. About 12.5 lakh people are affected as flood waters submerged thousands of houses and agriculture fields. Over 20,000 people have taken shelter in 18 relief camps set up by the government. Two World Heritage sites, the Kaziranga and Manas National Parks are also submerged. 140 गांव अभी अफेक्ट हुआ आज तक माने 140 गांव पे हम रिलीफ मटेरियल दे दिया और ये ब्रह्मपुत्र नदी भी माने डेंजर लेवल के ऊपर माने भर रहे हैं माने फ्लो हो रहे हैं और ये ब्रह्मपुत्र का पानी कम हो जाएगा तो वो फ्लड सिचुएशन तो कम हो जाएगा At least four people died in last 24 hours as the flood situation worsened in three districts of West Bengal More than 58,000 people are affected in 150 villages of Jalpaiguri and Kooch Bihar districts. Most affected states are Assam, West Bengal, Bihar, Arunachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And all these states have been reeling under flood situation simply because in certain states there has been some rain there has been heavy to very heavy rains and also because of the release of water from uh, nepal the situation in flood ravaged namsai and east siang districts of arunachal pradesh is also grim there are reports of fresh areas being inundated by several rivers that are flowing above danger mark the weatherman has warned of heavy rains in uttar pradesh uttarakhand himachal pradesh karnataka meghalaya bihar Haryana and Delhi Bureau Report Rajya Sabha TV And now let's take it through some more national news updates in nationwide A 17 year old girl from Jafarabad in northeast Delhi became the first casualty of dengue this year in the city The girl died at the Delhi government run Loknail Loknayak Hospital due to what is called the dengue shock syndrome In the past one week alone the city reported 40 dengue cases taking the total number of dengue cases to 90 this season. Manipuri human rights activist Irom Sharmila today said that she will end her hunger strike on the 9th of August. She told media persons that she will now contest the assembly elections in the state as an independent candidate. Irom has been on a fast for nearly 16 years demanding the repeal of the controversial Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Auto rickshaws and taxis in Delhi went on an indefinite strike today against the app-based taxi services like Uber and Ola. The auto rickshaw union say that the government had failed to fulfill its commitment on taking action against the app-based services. There are about 85,000 auto rickshaw and 15,000 yellow black taxis in the capital. Supreme Court today said that the bull taming sport of Jallikatta cannot be justified even if it is a centuries old tradition. The court fixed the 30th of August for the final hearing on the matter to decide on the constitutional validity of Jallikatta. It further said that no adjournments will be granted in the case after it commences the final hearing in the matter. With our quick break here, more news follows in a bit. Do stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Pipharava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome back to the news tonight. Let's get to international news starting with France where the police today killed two armed men who had taken several people hostage 
at a church in the northern part of the country. According to police, two knife-wielding men attacked the church and took five people hostage, including a priest, two nuns and two worshippers. French media reported that the attackers slit the throat of the priest. The attackers were also killed after police stormed the building. The terror group Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. Meanwhile, France's anti-terrorist prosecution unit has taken over the charge of the investigation. French President François Hollande also reached the crime scene and vowed to fight against the ISIS by all means. The Vatican too has condemned the attack and called it a barbarous killing. The incident comes as France is under high alert after an attack in Nice that killed 84 people and a string of deadly attacks last year claimed by the Islamic State. Sur les catholiques qui ont été frappés, tous les catholiques, mais ce sont tous les Français qui se sont qui se sentent concernés. C'est pourquoi nous devons être dans une cohésion, dans un ensemble, dans un bloc que personne ne doit pouvoir fissurer. Meanwhile, in Japan, a knife-wielding man stabbed and killed as many as 19 people and injured 25 others at a care center for the mentally disabled. A 26-year-old Satoshi Uematsu, a former employee of the disabled facility, also reportedly said that all disabled should disappear. Authorities have called it Japan's worst mass killing in decades. It was early hours on Tuesday when a 26-year-old man, Satoshi Uematsu, entered a care home for people with disabilities in Japan's Kanagawa prefecture and went on a stabbing rampage. At least 19 people were stabbed to death and over 25 were injured. The incident was described as Japan's worst mass casualty in the post-war era. After going on a shooting spree, the attacker, Satoshi Uematsu, then drove himself to the police station to turn himself in and was immediately arrested. According to local media reports, Uematsu said that it's better that disabled people disappear and in fact wrote a letter in February to the Speaker of the Lower House of Japan's Parliament calling for euthanasia for disabled people. Uematsu was a former employee of the very same disabled facility where the incident happened. ま、しかしそれからResidents of Saga Mihara said the last murder in the area was reported 10 years ago. Such bloodshed is highly unusual in Japan, which had one gun death last year, and this attack is shaping up to be the worst single perpetrator mass murder in modern Japanese history. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now to the US, where the 4D Democratic National Convention started yesterday in Philadelphia on a tense note. Vermont Governor Bernie Sanders endorsed Democrat presidential candidate Hillary Clinton for the top post but did receive a mixed response. Sanders did say that the choice between Clinton and Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump was not even close and U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama also passionately endorsed Hillary Clinton. The U.S. Democratic National Convention kicked off on a divisive note in Philadelphia on Monday. The opening day saw furor over controversy surrounding leaked emails that threatened to derail a message of party unity. Former presidential nominee and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders received a rousing welcome when he took the podium, but his appeal to choose Hillary Clinton as the next president saw a mixed response from the crowd. I serve with her in the United States Senate and know her as a fierce advocate for the rights of children for women and for the disabled. <laughs> Hillary Clinton will make an outstanding president and I am proud to stand with her tonight. Later in the evening, U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama received a rapturous reception for a powerful speech in which she took on Republican nominee tonight. Donald Trump and passionately because bagged Hillary Clinton for the White House post.
I want a president who will teach our children that everyone in this country matters. A president who truly believes in the vision that our founders put forth all those years ago, that we are all created equal, each a beloved part of the great American story. And I am here tonight because I know that that is the kind of president that Hillary Clinton will be. And that's why in this election, I'm with her. Several Hollywood celebrities like also pledged their Americans, support to Clinton I and criticized Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump for his comments about immigrants. I'm proud to support a presidential candidate who will fight to ensure all people living with mental health condition, conditions get the care they need to lead fulfilling lives. That candidate is Hillary Clinton. Meanwhile, in an address to a veterans group in Philadelphia, Hillary Clinton said she had an optimistic view of America in contrast to that of her Republican opponent, Donald Trump, who presented a dark and divisive picture. One thing for certain you will not ever hear from me is praise for dictators and strong men who have no love for America. Clinton will accept the presidential nomination on Thursday as she bids to become the first female president of the United States of America. The current opinion poll shows Trump has slightest of edge over Clinton. Clinton likely will need some portion of Sanders' support to stay competitive. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's take you through some more international news updates in Global Plus. Police in Bangladesh killed nine suspected Islamist militants after a gun battle in Dhaka. The militants belong to the banned Jamaat al-Mujahideen that was responsible for the Dhaka cafe terror attack this month. The militants were killed after an hour-long gunfight while another terrorist who received bullet wounds was arrested. Around 10 people were killed including seven UN guards in a suicide bomb blast in Baghdad. Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack which happened when an explosives-laden car tried to speed through the barrier at the UN Mine Action Services office in Mogadishu. Al-Shabaab is waging an insurgency war against Somalia's weak UN-backed government. A patient shot a doctor before committed suicide at a Berlin hospital. Police said that there was no sign of any terrorist attack. According to preliminary information, a patient shot a doctor and then killed himself. The shooting came with Germany already on edge after four brutal attacks in the country. All right, now sports news and in another disappointment, India's medal winning hopes at the upcoming Rio Games suffered yet another setback after ace shot putter Inderjeet Singh failed a doping test. Inderjeet became the second athlete to test positive for a banned substance. His ace sample has returned positive for steroids, androsterone and etioclonanone. In fact, Inderjeet was informed by the National Anti-Doping Agency on Monday night itself and his out-of-competition com test was uh, done on the 22nd of June. Inderjeet claimed that it was a conspiracy against him and his sample has been tampered with. Meanwhile, NADA Director General refused to confirm Inderjeet's name since his B sample was yet to, to be tested, but he did reveal that the shot putter had recorded a whereabouts failure last month. He is given an option of sample B. Uh, right now, only sample A has tested positive and uh, sample B, we would uh, give him an option. And uh, if he chooses that, then uh, the seal would be, uh, he would be witness to the, to the sealing that was done in his presence and the testing would be done in his presence. And uh, after that, uh, the report comes in, then a panel would be constituted where he can put up any other defense that he would like to. <laughs> इस तरह की साजिश रची जाती है हमारे हमारे यहाँ और ऐसा भी कहा जा रहा है कि इंद्रजी डोप से भाग रहा था पर ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है मैं जब से यूएस से आया हूँ लगातार मैंने छह बार डोप टेस्ट दिया है और ये जो डोप हुआ है ये जो बीच में हुआ है मतलब जो थर्ड डोप टेस्ट हुआ है और ऊपर जो दो हुए हैं और बाद में जो तीन हुए हैं उसका अभी कोई भी रिजल्ट नहीं है तो ये बीच में कैसे आ गया और इसके पीछे साजिश है और इस तरह से की गई है कि इंदर को खत्म कर दिया जाए।
Seven Russian swimmers were banned from the Rio Olympics, including three linked to recent allegations of a major doping cover-up by Russian authorities. World Swimming's governing body, FINA, said that reigning world 100-meter breaststroke champion Yulia Efimova was among the four Russian swimmers withdrawn by the Russian Swimming Federation because they previously served doping bans. FIFA's Ethics Committee has banned Wolfgang Nischbach, the former president of the German Football Association, from all football-related activity for one year. FIFA Ethics Committee found the 65-year-old failed to report potential misconduct concerning the award of the 2006 Soccer World Cup in Germany. Nischbach designed, resigned from his DFP role in November last year. England defeated Pakistan by a massive 330 runs to win the second test at Old Trafford on Monday. Chasing a mammoth 565 for victory, Pakistan were bowled out for 234 in their second innings after tea on the fourth day. With this win, England has levelled the four-match series at one all. Former Grand Slam champions Petra Kivitova and Samantha Stosa have advanced to the second round of the WTA Hardcore Tournament in Montreal. Give it over East Pass Poland's Magda Lynette 6162, while former US champion, US Open champion Stosa dispatched Britain's Heather Watson 7563. Egypt's Olympic medal hopeful Ehab Abdel Rahman has been suspended for failing a doping test. Egypt's anti doping authority NADO said that Abdel Rahman was tested in April and his A sample gave a positive reading at a lab in Barcelona. Abdel Rahman secured Egypt's first medal at a major athletic championship in Beijing last year. And that's what we have for you on the news tonight. Thanks for joining us.